Hi and welcome to a Weekly Outlook. This is Kim speaking on Monday the 30th of October. So a very, there's a lot of data coming out this week. I was looking originally and just saw a couple of uh, interest rate decisions. Of course there's three coming out, although one of them may have a much lesser effect on the markets. But of course we've got non-farm payrolls. It's the first week of the month. So lots of, lots of uh, data coming out, key data. So let's just run through. Monday is a quiet day in terms of significant data. Um, I don't expect any surprises or anything coming from this data left. There is the uh, personal spending, uh, the personal uh, con personal consumption expenditure coming out at uh, 12.30 at the moment because of the hour difference in the uh, US. So um, I may get a little kick from that but I'm not expecting too much. From there onwards, uh, well, uh, next, w uh, next few days, Tuesday, we've got uh, the Bank of Japan policy rate decision, which it's not expected to change. Uh, it's expected to be leave left in there. Statement may itself create some volatility, so there is some potential volatility to kick in there from the statement, etc., in a press conference. So, wouldn't discount that completely, but uh, in terms of interest rate decisions, nothing's expected. Moving through, We've got um, uh, European uh, CPI flash estimates, not a, not a big number in terms of its uh, effect on the market generally. Uh, as it increases, it may and the inflation starts moving closer to two percent. We see may see a bit more movement there, but uh, the, the uh, ECB have pretty much announced their their thoughts on the markets coming up. So I don't see that as a big mover this week. Uh, Canadian GDP data, it's a monthly figure, so it tends to have less bearing on the markets, although uh, we did see a bit more volatile, uh, volatility sitting around it last month, I seem to remember, but uh, it's not a big, big mover in general. Um, following on through that, coming Wednesday starts getting busy as we move into the new month. Uh, we've got a French and Italian All Saints Day uh, bank holiday there, so neither will be in volume, but the volume may be lighter, I should say. But... Um, uh, the rest of the market is still functioning as normal. Um, important thing for Wednesday morning then is the manufacturing PMI data for the UK. It's a, that's a starter. We've got an ADP at 12.15, which may create some volatility. We're still looking in the US for an interest rate increase in December. Uh, so uh, uh, further changes here positively, uh, particularly um, as we move towards Friday's uh, not farm payrolls would be more significant, uh, but it may start at this number, we'll see. Um, but more importantly, we've got the FOMC a statement, Fed funds rate, etc. on 6 p.m. There isn't a speech at this one, so it's, it's normally a given that it won't change. At 1.25% it will remain. It's expected December being the main factor there. Now, uh, Trump is expected to announce his uh, decision on uh, the next uh, chair person um, it, this week it may come on Wednesday we never know but uh, at some point this week we'll probably see it on Twitter at some stage okay um, now and that uh, that tweet could move the markets quite significantly uh, there are su suggestions that it may be a hawk um, and then there's there's a hawk and a dove in the place so whichever one it will it will move the market uh, moving through from there, we've got um, on coming a Thursday some more key data. So we've already had two um, central banks. We've got the third coming in on Wednesday, uh, on Thursday rather. Uh, we've got uh, before that though, uh, keyed up number for the pound in the morning is the construction PMI. It's not such not so significant as manufacturing, but still can uh, create a bit of volatility around 9:30. But I think the markets will really be seeing watching for this uh, the expectation of an interest rate increase uh, of 0.25 to put it back to where it was pre-Brexit. Okay, uh, it will be looking at the comments coming from that statement which will be um, key there in terms of looking for further increases or just looking at it more balanced. Um, beyond that point then, um, then we're moving through, we've got Carney speaking at 12.30 on Thursday, um, of course what, what that will uh, to say create volatility around there as well and um, what he has to say moving into Friday so the, the main figure is the non-farm payrolls but we have got uh, so for the Aussie Australian uh, markets there we've got retail sales coming out early services PMI key one for the pound always 
I say always, mostly, we create volatility around 9.30, it's the biggest function of the GDP, so uh, traders will be watching for that. Um, and as I said, non-farm payrolls, but we've got the Canadian data coming out at the same time, so a bit more of a conflict on Friday there, but uh, certainly some numbers coming out there. And then leading through um, into the afternoon, the US non-manufacturing PMI, so a bit later on. So 12.30 non-farms, uh, 2 o'clock uh, non-manufacturing PMI this week. Okay, that's it. So in terms of uh, uh, data, that's a lot of significant data coming out. So uh, I'm prepared for, for action. So let's look at the markets and look at them technically. At the moment, from a, I'm just going to drill down from a monthly downwards. Monthly-wise, uh, the euro does look like it's, uh, it's it might be put in an intermediate top there. Um, it's selling, it's still selling off uh, through. It's come down to a weekly then, and sort of see this picture a little bit clearer. And well, um, we've closed down below the weekly 21s at the moment we could and we have seen a bit of a retracement at the moment some, uh, that's a bit of weakness across at the moment we just look and it may on some of the bigger time frames give us a bit of a bit of a retracement to sell into possibly there with the euro be interesting how it pans out this week the pound let's come on the bigger picture first there look at the monthlies here and well, the pounds, it's, it's, it's been up now and in, in, from a monthly point, we've got these three peaks here. Uh, be interesting to see if it can push on through at some point, uh, particularly with the expected interest rate increase. At the moment, it, you're looking from a, from a weekly point of view, it's in this sort of wedge pattern at the moment uh, with support coming off the weekly 21s. From a daily perspective, it's looking quite choppy over the last week or so. Um, it's it's not, not a clear picture of what's happening. There's an expectation that we could see a kick up here, uh, maybe with the news a little bit, and then once the news comes out, maybe the markets will sell on the news. We'll have to see. It re I think it really depends on what Carney says following the release, so uh, in terms of what the pound does there. But at the moment, it's erring, I would suggest, for trading leading into um, the announcement. Um, I would say it's erring towards the bullish side there. Okay, uh, dollar yen. Look at the bigger picture first here. Let's come out to the monthlies. So, bigger picture. Um, well, it's running uh, to the previous highs there. Um, it's actually that needs to come down to the weekly. It's not really showing me too much more. Um, but uh, it's running to that sort of previous highs area. There's a potential it could push back up to that. that uh, trend line that was coming down, it, 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 it sort of kissed short of that, it could come back to that trend line that sits across the highs. Uh, but um, Doji sitting on the weekly, suggesting a bit of weakness, uh, in the short term at least. Interesting to see how we break on through, with sort of just shy of the uh, a retest of the daily eights here. That, that's been tested a few times, so maybe it will roll over and we'll see a bit more of a correction to the downside. There was a bit of sort of divergence running across them, depending on what indicator you're using across the highs there. So, um, uh, as I say, you could see a bit more of a correction, maybe back towards the uh, 21s and, and beyond. But certainly, uh, yeah, looking weakish at the moment from this daily picture. Okay, so uh, switch on, carry on here, and look at the Aussie dollar. Okay, I'm just going to pull back to the monthly for a moment. You can see where we are sitting and with this month almost finished here it's looking like a monthly bearish pivot swing sort of sitting in there it's right at the bottom of its sort of bands at the moment on that monthly picture um, the, the uh, weekly 50 possibly provide a bit of support I had put the trend line across the uh, the highs here previously and it's sort of just looking to see if it came back tested that and bounced and there is, a, I mean, there the, with the different things I'm looking at there, there is a bit of confluence around this area. Maybe we will get a little bit of a bounce coming from it. Um, Friday put us in a, um, a bit of a hammer there at the bottom there. Our weekly pivots above, so we've got at least short term, we've got a potential for a, a push maybe back up here for for a while. Um, but the, the trend is certainly to the downside. Maybe a tad oversold on some, some indicators, etc. Uh, maybe we, we do a, a, move, a bit more of a correction back towards the daily 8s or 21s, but uh, I think the easiest route is certainly to the south side at the moment on the Aussie. But 
I think it'd be more prudent waiting for a retracement to sell into rather than trying to be buying the bottom at the moment. Canadian dollar, it's a bit of a different story here. We've pushed up quite strongly. We've come to the monthly picture. You can see we've run into the monthly 21 last week, actually, that occurred into the high so far, uh, upper band sort of area there. Now we may be finding resistance looking down, coming down the picture a little bit. There's still the potential for it to push back towards the 34. Uh, weekly 34, weekly 50, but maybe that uh, monthly fit, monthly 21 is just holding it a bit, a bit more. Um, short term, it's uh, well, it's got the weekly pivot below us at the moment. We put the shooting star in on Friday. Maybe, maybe we've got a bit more downside towards the uh, daily 821 sort of area. A bit more of a correction. So, yeah, I mean, it's been, it moved up quite solidly over this time. Um, it um, may, may be due. As I say, a bit more of a correction here. Okay, that's pretty much it from me on these markets. Um, I could just have a quick look at uh, uh, what's happened in the S and P's. They seem to be wanting to push and push, and um, well, let's just look from a monthly perspective. It's not really going to show me too much apart from how strong it is in the way. I mean, last month it closed right at the top of the bar. It looks like it could be doing the same this month as well as we push up towards the. Uh, last day or two of the, the month. Um, weekly is not really doing anything more than sort of uh, it's already pushing back this week, back up then. Uh, I said this week, last week, but a big part this is delayed, of course, and it's uh, the cash market. It's pushed back up and closed there uh, for the end of the week there. Daily is wise, just looking at what's happened there. So Friday just closed up solid, making new highs. So again, it looks bullish. There's still more earnings to come out, and it could just continue pushing up for now at least. Yes, at some point we could see a correction, but I think the easiest route on, on most uh, uh, shallow retracements at the moment is to buy for the uh, continuation of the upside. Okay, that's it for me. Have a great week. Bye for now.